All right, 1.5, we are going to be displaying quantitative data again, but this time we're going to use a graph called a histogram. You can use a dot plot or, or stem plot to display quantitative data. Both graphs show very individual data, individual data values. For large data sets, this can make it difficult to see the overall pattern in the graph, however. We often get a clearer picture of the distribution by grouping nearby values together. Doing so allows us to make a new type of graph, which is called a histogram. A histogram shows each interval as a bar. The heights of the bar show the frequency or the relative frequency of values in each interval. So you might be like, well, how is this different than a bar graph? Well, bar graphs, the bars touch each other. The histograms, I'm sorry, bar graphs, the, bar, the bars do not touch each other. But in a histogram, the bars do touch each other. So here you see. A is the dot plot of this data. It's duration in minutes of 222 eruptions of the old faithful geyser. So you can see we created this dot plot. That's fine and good. And then in B, we made a histogram. So you can see it looks kind of like a bar chart, but the bars are closer together, like they're touching, but they give us the same information. All right. So how do you do this? First of all, choose equal width interval that span the data. Five intervals is good. It's a good minimum. So what that means, you're going to look for the minimum and the maximum in the values on of your data and you know, divide it up into at least five groups. You can do more than five. That's fine. But at least five is just generally a good rule, rule of thumb. You're going to make a table that shows the frequency. You're going to count them or the relative frequency of the individuals in each interval. Depending on the problem, it might ask you for relative frequency. Draw and label your axis. Put the name of the quantitative variable under the horizontal axis. To the left of the vertical axis, indicate if the graph shows frequency or relative frequency. Then you're going to scale the axis. Okay? Place each equally spaced tick marks at the smallest value in the interval. On the vertical axis, start at zero and equally place spaced tick marks until you exceed the largest frequency or relative frequency. And then lastly, draw the bars above the intervals. Make the bars equal in width and leave no gaps between them. The height of each bar corresponds to the frequency or the relative frequency of individuals in that interval. An interval with no data values will appear as a bar of height zero on the graph. All right, so the choice of intervals in a histogram can affect the appearance of a distribution. Okay, the figure below shows two different histograms of foreign resident data. The one on the left uses intervals of width 5 from the previous example of figure 4. But the one on the right uses intervals half as wide. Okay, it only goes to 2.5, 0 to 2.5, 2 0.5 to 5, so on and so forth. Now, histograms with more intervals show more detail, but may have less overall, less clear overall pattern. Okay, so you can see what's happening here. It gives us more detail, but it may or may not give us more pattern to have more intervals. Like I said, you want to have five as a minimum. You can do more, and it can give you more features of the distribution. Histograms can be used to compare the distributions of quantitative variables in two or more groups. It's a good idea to use relative frequencies, percents, or proportions when comparing, especially if the groups have different sizes. Be sure to use the same intervals when making comparative histograms so the graph can be drawn using a common horizontal axis scale. That gives us a better visual. So here's a question. Is it true that students who graduate from high school earn more money than students who do not graduate from high school? Oh, sorry. So we look at this. It says high school graduate. That those who did not graduate from high school, if you look at the top histogram here, um, you can see that 60% of them see, make less than $10,000 a year. And then what does it say? 25% 20, of them make between 10 and 20, and then 20 and 30, and 30 and 40, and 40, 50, so on and so forth. Now, these down here, yes, they graduated from high school, so you can see that those who are making 40, 50, 60, and 140 grand, there's more there that fit that description than those who did not graduate high school. Okay, 
You want to keep the scales the same so that we can visually see what's happening. That's the bottom line of this, this uh, graph. All right. The IQ scores of 60 randomly selected fifth grade students from one school are shown. Make a histogram that displays the distribution of IQ scores effectively. All right, so we're going to walk through this. First thing I would recommend you do is find the highest and the lowest piece of data. All right, so let's skim this really quick. Okay, I think 145 is my highest. My lowest, there's an 81. Is there anything lower than 81? Okay. So 145 to 81. So what I might do is make my groupings start at like 80 to 89, and then 90 to 99, 100 to 109, 110 to 119, 120 to 129. 130 to 139, and then 140 to 149, okay? And then I need to make tally marks, okay? So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to speed up the video so you don't have to watch me do all of this, but I'm going to mark off each one as I put a tally mark down here, and then we'll build, I'll draw the histogram for you. All right, so like 145, that falls in this group right here. Put a tally mark. 139 is right here. 126 is in this group. Okay, so I've made my table and I've totaled up how many tally marks in each of these, what will be buckets, okay? So my biggest one has 18 in it. So when I make my axis, my x-axis is the different score. So I label it IQ score, evenly distribute them out. Frequency, I need to think about, okay, how many, what was the highest number I had over here? Well, the highest number I had was a 20 or 18. So I'm going to bump it up a little bit and put it 20. So if I split that, I have 5, 10, 15, and 20. And so now I'm going to build my histogram bars based on this frequency. Okay, so from 80 to 89, I only had 3. So it's going to be a very small bar. Okay, 90 to 99, I had 4, so it's going to be just slightly more. 100 to 109, I had 13. At 110 to 119, I had 18, so it's going to go almost all the way to 20. 20 to 29, I only had 11. 30 to 39, I had 10. And then 40 to 49, I had only 10. Okay? So that's what my histogram would look like. Now, yours needs to use straight edge and make it sure it's really clean and straight. That's hard to do with this tablet. Anyway, you get the idea. You need to have this drawn on your paper, all the messiness that I did. I need you to have the work that I did on your paper for full credit. So make sure you do that. Now, what do we do with this? Well, example two shows us a typical problem with histograms that's outside of just creating one. So you'll have to be able to create one, but you'll also have to be able to interpret. So here's a good interpretation problem. Since burning fuels and power plants and motor vehicles emit carbon dioxide, which may contribute to global warming. The table displays CO2 emissions in metric tons per person from countries with populations of at least 20 million. So the first question says, how many countries are accounted for by the history? Well, how in the world would you know this? Well, you have to look at the bars and kind of estimate what each bar is looking at. So this first bar, look, it goes all the way up to 12. So we're going to say this is 12, and then we read them. This is at 5, this is at 4, this is at 5, this is at 3, this is at 1, or 2, sorry. This is down at 2, this one's at 4, that's at 3, this one's down here at 1, this is 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, and a 2. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add all these totals up. Okay, when I add them up, 12 plus 5 plus 4 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 4 plus 3, on and on, I get a total of 48 countries. All right, that's how you would know how many were used in the in the data if you didn't if they didn't tell you. Now, 
Describe the shape of this. Now remember broad strokes. If I do broad strokes, what's it going to do? It's going to pull a tail over to the right. So if I describe the shape of the distribution, we would say skew to the right with a single peak in the, what is that first bucket? Well, it's zero to one interval. And then there's some gaps here, okay? There are gaps between 9 and 11 and say, 13 and 15, okay? So we identify the gaps, identify any peak, and we look at the shape, all right? Now, in what percent of countries did carbon dioxide emissions exceed 10 metric tons per person? Well, exceed means more than, more than 10. So I look at my thing. Okay, which ones are more than 10? Well, here's 9 to 10. So I'm looking at this piece of the graph right here. If I add those up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's 6 out of the 48 countries. So to get my percentage, I divide, and I get 12.5%. Uh, All right? That's how you answer a question using the histogram. We'll do this again, again in class, and then you'll have some practice.